sort of suggestion. And that is this. That before we decide either to save the planet or to destroy it, we pause for a moment of silence. Welcome back to Realism Overhaul, a summary of events which happen live on Twitch, link is below. I hope you enjoyed the music for that little montage, it's a work in progress piece I've had lying around and thought I'd put it to use somewhere somehow. But anyways, Cosmos 2 and 3, which we launched 4 episodes ago, have arrived at Jupiter. Ever since, we've been needing to babysit these two spacecraft as they periodically make their way purposefully dangerously close to these alien worlds, where much is to be discovered in the realm of science. Genuinely, the wall of data being transmitted from this mission so far is impressive, and will definitely put that science to good use. We had contracts to fly past all four Galilean moons, Europa, Callisto, Ganymede, and Io, and we've successfully completed this feat. We've flown past Europa and Ganymede several times, though Io and Callisto continue to elude our trajectories for the most part, though we have managed to visit them once so far. Honest, it's quite easy and alluring to keep flying past these moons, time warping, plotting another flyby, and entirely forget to have more missions planned and being built back on Earth. But hey, we've practically opened up the game to a sandbox at this point, so there's really no harm in it. Uh, the single only deadline I really care about is coming up though, that being the Voyager launch window, and I'm excited to show you guys what we've been cooking up for that transfer window. Also an interesting mission towards Venus is in the works, we are just about to begin a fully fledged crewed lunar exploration, and our first space station is nearing the end of its design phase, so there is still plenty going on. But interjecting all of those ambitions right around the corner are constant Kerbal alarm clock alarms going off, making sure Cosmos 2 and 3 don't impact something. I believe Cosmos 4 is only one year from reaching Saturn, and that will be much the same. Why not throw another craft into the mix, right? Truthfully, I may only report significant events of the Cosmos 2 and 3 missions from now on, as the plan with these spacecrafts are to leave them in their eccentric moon encounter orbits, adjusting their trajectories for as long as propellant in their craft will last, and when we're close to running dry, we're going to send them into the atmosphere of Jupiter to go out with a bang, and we'll do the same thing with Cosmos 4 at Saturn down the line. And we'll definitely document that, don't worry. But yeah, this is our very first glimpse of the Jupiter system, and it is quite a fun one. Sending crew out here is going to be an experience, and really what I found out is the only real concern I have sending crew out here is the insane amount of radiation around Jupiter. Landing on Io and planting a flag is going to have to be a very in-and-out touch-and-go mission, as the crew won't survive there long at all. 
but our objective for this series is to plant a flag everywhere possible, and I still have that feeling it will be possible. During streams, we'll definitely be swapping to these craft all the time, so head over if you'd like to see them more, or if we have a trajectory request, or anything really. These are some of the most noodly trajectories I've experienced since landing on Phobos. Um, which, that reminds me, we have another Mars mission planned as well for the next transfer window, which we're in the mid-1970s, I should mention, uh, to land on Deimos and explore the surface in a unique way. But that will be a mission for another episode. For now, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and peace out. Wait.